Welcome to Six of One and Bill of the Other. Just the facts. Episode already, episode three. Bill, just explain the premise once more, although you'll probably do it every single time, but once more. Just the facts. We are going to read new facts that we've never heard before and react to them in real time. Uh, we could make a joke, we could learn something new, or all of the above. And we can drink a beer while we're... Do you ever unfold your arm like a, like a fern? No. No. <laughs> no. Nor do I. Just the facts. I just laughed and it made me think. Uh, I was listening to our last episode and... Uh, I heard my own laugh and I was absolutely horrified. <laughs> you don't usually hear yourself in real, you know. It reminds me I need to oil, then... <laughs> it reminds me I need to oil the door hinges. <laughs> <laughs> so I <laughs> So I thought like I read and I was like I literally I thought to myself I was like man I got to like work on my laugh like I can't be laughing like that. And then of course I read a comment and then it was like, man, that guy's laugh's contagious. It's now like my of the best laugh that ever existed. I gotta laugh more. Now I'm like I gotta laugh more. Oh, I noticed whenever you look up social media like how to videos, it's either a girl that speaks like this. Okay, so first you wanna start your video with a call to action. This lets people know that they wanna stay with your video. But when it's a guy, he's always European. Like he's always like, All right, learning how to do TikTok. And then I don't know why, like, I don't trust, I wouldn't trust me. Like if I came on, I was like, all right, all right I'm going to explain TikTok to you. I wouldn't watch that. And I think most people agree because every video, it's either that girl. So it's like we, you need to have an online presence and be posting regularly. Or it's that this is, or to be professional in TikTok, rule number four. Like it's, it's, it's one or the other. And I think the accent leads, uh leads credence like i don't think anyone without that accent has ever done a how-to video this is where successful. you assign intelligence to the accent it's like in this country yeah. you must have a similar over there i would have thought it's the southern accent but over here oh i could i could alienate whole swathes of the country now but if you <laughs> if someone talks to you in a brummy accent i wish i could do a brummy accent i can't i can't do accents but if someone oh like ozzy osbourne and what's your equivalent oh i mean uh, and apologies to the viewers from birmingham and the listeners to, from birmingham <laughs> Uh, have you You're got a Birmingham? In the Peaky got... Blinders here, I think, right? <laughs> you... Oh, actually, is that the Peaky Blinders? Actually, um, Peaky Blinders, set... yeah, set in Birmingham, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do they all do brummy so. accents? Do they all do brummy accents in Peaky Blinders? I've never seen it. I can't really do. All right, we gotta go. Go to the store. We gotta get all this worked out. Or is that how they speak? So I'm they, assuming. All... <laughs> I'm assuming <laughs> in Peaky like Blinders, then they don't do brummy accents by the sounds of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't that, know what that, that was. I don't even know. Hey, what... Is there a Birmingham in Alabama? Birmingham, I've got to Alabama. go to the bleed to get the bleed me boom. I've got to get to the bleed to get to the bleed me boom. They could say they kind of sound like to me, because they always do. The Peaky Blinders always does the thing that they used to do in the A Team, where they do a nonsensical plan, but it works. All right, Mercurio number six. I need you to go to the bleed me boom. Give me the author. Go get me the bleed me boom, and we'll. And then it somehow it's a shame. It I've always works out in the end. I've always wanted to go to the bloom me boom, but uh, the bloom me boom. You got to go if, to the bloom me boom. If you ever get the chance Arthur, to, Arthur, go to the bloom me boom. <laughs> Oh, I'm obsessed with Blimini Bums. You said that the the, the, the girl. So on social media, you, yeah, you, that girl. When you create a when you create a video, the first thing you need to do is a call to action to keep yes, people that's interested. Correct. Why we didn't do a call to action? We need on this channel a call to action a at the beginning that makes people something that people listen to and go, "Holy shit! I need to hang around for this." And all I did was go, oh, welcome. It's uh, six of one and Bill of the other, and we're going to talk about facts. It's not a call to no, action. I would switch off. I would switch off to this shit. That lady would be terribly disappointed if she watched our video. She'd be like, look, I'm going to have to turn off because there's been no call to action. Five ways to learn with new facts. Right, okay. Right? Think about something like that. I'll give you 10 seconds yeah. to think of it. Something that mm. you can say in 10 seconds from now. That if I heard okay. it, I would go, Jesus, I have to watch and listen to this all the way through for 50 minutes of mediocrity. Got it. Ready? Five facts that'll send chills down your spine. Tune in. Good? Yeah, 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 yeah. But we... The mercurial number six will expose his breast at the end of this video. <laughs> Just one. 
There's left I mean, breast. We, I mean, there's a difference between <laughs> having a chill down the spine and creating a stroke victim. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, right, hang on. I like that. But the problem is, yeah. on the first fact now, we need to live up to the, uh, the call to well. action. So the first fact needs to send a chill down the listener's spine. I think this one will. So normally we okay. do we react in real time. Right. This one I have seen before because I decided for our first fact to go to the AI Google Bard and ask the AI Google Bard to give us our first fact. Are you ready? Oh, let, let, let me let me adopt brace poise position. Ready uh, for for the intake of knowledge. Ready? Hang on. <laughs> we certainly are going to have to. <laughs> Are you shitting or are you getting ready for a fact? This is I, how I, I this is how it. this is how I absorb new knowledge. We're definitely going to have to put a link to where the facts start. And the facts start here. The average human body has about 2 to 6 pounds of bacteria. This is about 1 to 3% of the body's mass. The majority of these bacteria are found in the gut, but they are also found on the skin, in the mouth, and in other parts of the body. The bacteria in our bodies play an important role in our health. They help us to digest food, produce vitamins, and protect us from harmful bacteria. They also skeeve us out when learning of their existence. Yeah. And they help the immune system be I've, strong. I've heard this one before, where a scientist will come on and say that the human body is basically a collection of other organisms, billions and billions of other organisms. And when you hear it, it's like, what did you say, six pounds? Two to six pounds. To, imagine six, and a pound is a bag of sugar. Yeah. So six bags of sugars worth of alien uh, microbes and organisms in my belly. I mean, I've got, I've definitely got a belly that, I definitely got a belly that can accommodate six bags I think of sugar. I'm, I think I'm at the, I think I'm at the six pounds. I, uh, I, it's also something when, you, if you want to get romantic, to whisper into your partner's ear right before. I just wanted you to know that the human body has two to six pounds of bacteria living bacteria inside of it it's about to be 12 pounds of bacteria smacking up against <laughs> oh my god oh my but yeah god. it's um to your point it's uh it's pretty surreal and i you know that old bible verse where he's like i am legion in the, the sense that we are Trill we are supporting trillions of life forms just by being alive. And then if we die, it gets like a little better for them for a little bit. And then we just wipe out civilizations. I've heard recently, it might have been on one of these, um, <laughs> on a podcast, a sort of Joe Rogan type podcast where <laughs> yeah. they were saying that the, the sheer number of these organisms that make up your body actually can control your emotions. So therefore, yes. the the old thing about what, what uh, thinking about what you eat was always about weight loss but it should be more about genuinely how you feel if you can keep the creatures in your belly on side you can have a brighter day have i ever told you that you make the bacteria in my gut laugh i mean the, honestly the, the bacteria in my gut finds you uh, well, I always use, you know, when you're a kid, you tell your mom, like, you do something bad, and you tell her the devil made you do it. I just use the billions of gut flora to be like, Con, you said you were going on a diet. I'm like, I've got billions of bacteria in my gut that it's... are forcing me to eat this leg of turkey leg. It's crazy. How, <laughs> how many... can you blame it? Read it again. How many, how many, uh, how many millions of bacteria on your tongue? Oh, uh, it, it's, it just said the majority of these bacteria are found in the gut, but they're also found in the skin, in the mouth, and in other parts of the body. That's, that's the exchange of <laughs> 7 million individuals. There's whole societies <laughs> yeah. exchanged by saliva. I also, why, while I was uh, speaking with Google Bard, always with the AI, I'm very, very polite, so I think it, it likes me. Because I'm thinking about the coming time when they're liquidating us to make energy. So I'm always like, oh, thank you. Like, I'm never rude. But I asked it. I said, I have a podcast with a friend who goes by the Mercurial number six. And my name is Bill. Can you give me a nickname like the Mercurial number six? And at first, here are the few she came up with. The Billowing number six. The Billowing Bard. The Billowing Billy. And then I said, can you give me more ideas and use a different number than six? 
The Budding Bicentennial, which I think is pretty catchy. The Bumbling Billy, which you'd probably prefer. Yeah, the Mercurial that's Number that's 6 like and a, Bumbling Billy. That sounds like a sitcom from the 70s. The Bumbling Billy. No, we're not, no there's no way you're bumbling. You are the most eloquent human being I've ever met, although I'm blaming <laughs> it. Although, I'm going to give all the credit to the 8 billion bacteria in your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> if I could shake hands with each of them individually, it would be a long day. Um, right, okay. That was a brilliant fact. I, I, I want... The, I want the people to uh, let us know. Obviously, they won't because they don't. The call to action fails, and no f ever comments. <laughs> but I want any, I want yeah. someone to know to let us know if if fact number one gave them a chill down the spine. In some places in history, counterfeiting coins was punishable with being boiled alive in oil, which Ooh. is the same punishment I use on turkey cutlets. <laughs> 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 oh. All right, uh, all right, let's see if I can find one. <laughs> I mean, this is just a moose. This is ridiculous. Six of one and Bill of the other. This is just Mercurial number six listens to Bill tell jokes, <laughs> isn't it? Just a fact, my ass. Let me brace myself. Ready? Right now. Right now. <laughs> Disney Disneyland formulated two specific colors go away green and blending blue to help erase. Backstage buildings and camouflage parts of the park that are under construction. I like what you're saying there. So in Disneyland, mm -hmm. the buildings that we're not supposed to be looking at, so not the pink fairy tale yep. cast and all that stuff, but all the stuff that's good on around it, if they paint the high up ones blue and the low down ones green, they disappear. Well, they're meant to, yeah. Well, they, the, they, the they blend in. They don't call it. They don't call attention to themselves. They blend in, hence why it's, was it called, you call it Bendy Baby Blue? No, Blendy Baby Blue. What do you call it? Blendy Baby. Ooh, <laughs> Blendy Baby. No, it was no baby. We, it was no baby, was that? In fact, in fact, we called it none of those things. Oh. It was called Go Away Green and Blending Blue. Two aviation incidents happened where superstitious, inexperienced passengers tried to throw coins into the plane's engine for good luck before the flight. This is in America, yeah? I had a buddy, and um, it, uh, <laughs> his dad was very sentimental, and their parents had just gone through a divorce, and he was walking with my friend, and they were just outside of his apartment, and like I said, his dad is super sentimental, and he turns to um, my friend, and he goes, uh, you're going to remember this moment for the rest of your life, you know, because he's real sad because he just got a divorce and stuff, and he takes one more step, and he goes... <laughs> He goes, oh my god, I think I shit my he goes, oh my god, I think I shit my pants. And he did, he ran into the apartment. And it was absolutely true. It was absolutely true because I wasn't even there and I'll remember that moment for the rest of my life. And now I will sin. <laughs> and I Son, you'll remember this moment for the rest of your life. <laughs> And I always think about it because, like, what was going on in the dad's head? So was the dad, like, I'm going to lay this, like, sentimental thing on my son? Was his next thought, like, I could probably squeeze this one out. No one will know. <laughs> so, oh. I wanted you to know that I have always loved you. I think I can get one out <laughs> real quick. There's never a good time to shit your pants. It's like, never a good time to shit your pants. Uh, my famous uh, third grade story. I've told you this oh. before. Uh, I was in third grade, oh. had a crush on the girl next to me, and I had to fart, and it was the middle of a test, so everyone's real quiet. And we had these metal desks, so you have like a metal seat, and then a thing, and you know, the, the desk, and, and everyone's quiet, and their pencils. But I have to fart really bad. I'm in third grade. <laughs> I don't know how I do it. So in my head, I thought the good, like, what I could do is I kind of like angled my cheek like this, right? <laughs> and the thought was it wouldn't make a noise by hitting the metal desk. But what happened, unfortunately, <laughs> is it hit the, the chair at this angle that I could never recreate. And instead of sounding like a normal fart, it made this high-pitched squealing sound. It was it a went, whistle. <laughs> Like a balloon. And people were just like looking and like, you know, bats are hitting the window because it's <laughs> with their sonar and shit, you know, like 
Everyone's like, ah! And oh. then, like, oh. I kind of, like, got nervous, and I oh. pushed more, and it made it go up in pitch, so it was like, <laughs> So now it sounded like a like a like a Viking like some kind of Viking horn oh. like people are charging and uh, I'll never forget it. My teacher, Mr. Gillespie, he said, uh, "Excuse me," and everyone laughed and thought it was him. This next fact might be interesting, but I don't know what a Pantone is. Do you know what a Pantone is? I know Pantene is uh, shampoo, and I'm not talking about the shampoo. Oh, you beat me! There. <laughs> I was gonna say, and I'm not talking. I'm not talking about. The shampoo. Because it says Heinz registered their own Pantone to fight ketchup fraud. Oh, it's that. Okay, I'm genuine. I'm interested. Right. So, is that the fact? Look up Pantone. That's the fact. That's the The fact. The fact needs to include what Pantone is. It's just the fact. Okay, what is the meaning of Pantone? In 1963, Pantone, meaning all colors, combining pan and tone, Developed the first color matching system. Here we go, right? This is what I reckon it means. Uh, There was a ketchup fraud because everyone was ripping off the Heinz ketchup. So what they did was they put a little ingredient in it that just like, okay, here's one for you. Just like the bloke who wrote, uh, this is a a fact. I'm telling you a fact now, right? And you'll probably know it anyway because you know everything. There was that famous trivia book back in like the 80s. And the bloke who wrote it included a question just, and this is, I think this has happened uh, ever since in all quiz type books and things, where you include a question with a, with a purposeful wrong answer so that when you get plagiarized in the future, the wrong answer uh, shows where the original plagiarism happened. And in his book, the, the, the question was, what is Columbo's first name? I always thought that ketchup fraud was when you go to somebody, hey, you want a sandwich of ketchup? And they're like, yeah, and they take a bite out of it, and you're like, psych, it was mustard. So this guy wrote a book, a trivia book, right? And in it, he put a purposeful wrong answer, and Trivial Pursuit, right, on their cards, Trivial Pursuit, I'll put it on the screen, Trivial Pursuit wrote a card, right, and it says, what's Columbo's first name? Right? And... Mm-hmm. Uh, they said the answer was Philip, right? Because this bloke in his okay. book, years before Trivial Pursuit, had written purposefully wrong Philip, right? The one, and people do this now, I think, in every quiz book ever since. You put one question in there with a wrong answer. So if anyone nicks for a pub quiz machine or for Trivial Pursuit, they nick your question. So he sued them. Fred Worth was the bloke who wrote the book. And he wanted $300 million in damages. Good God. So what I think happened, before you tell me what happened, I think Heinz were fed up of every company in the world nicking, uh, making recreations of tomato sauce, tomato ketchup. So they put in it a Philip Colombo type thing where they put in it an ingredient that it's really weird and that if they ever suspect someone's nicked or just um, fraudulently nick their ketchup, they analyze it and they find, and the, the, the element they put into it, unfortunately it was semen, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they analyze the fraudulent, Jesus. they analyze the fraudulent version, they find the creator semen in it and they say, gotcha, Philip Colombo, my ass. This burger, that was the longest way to get to a semen joke I've ever heard. <laughs> it was. You drove around the world twice. You, you drove around the world twice just to arrive at that destination. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a joke. I, I thought that they just they just registered the color of their red. That's how I took it. All right, moving along. The majority of solid, <laughs> the, the majority of sold produced oysters have an extra set of chromosomes making them sterile what percentage of oysters uh that you know when you, you know when you eat an oyster right well, i mean not, not i ever really have but when you husk or whatever you call them what do you call it what's the what's the term for opening an oyster with like you put the knife in and do that is that husking put or the something? knife in and do that anyway put the knife in what's the shucking is it shucking shucking shucking, shucking. shucking. that's you're much cl- more clever than me shucking right when you're shucking oysters mm. what's the percentage uh chance you know what's the percentage of oysters that uh, have a uh, pearl in them. 
Ooh, I was going to say probably 8%, and that's, I guess. I was also going to say, do you think they enjoy it when you're shucking them? Oh, Maybe blimey. That's well, that, that, sterile... that's... Maybe that's why you have to get the sterile ones, because then otherwise it would be a little awkward, you know? You're, you're basically asking uh, whether oysters feel pain. Which I think they might. I oh think most animals they've found they do. Are they alive? When they, are they already dead or not? Anyway, the, anyway, the, percent, well, usually... the percentage is zero. Anyway, the answer to the question was zero. Uh, there's a zero percent chance. It's uh, yeah, there are th there are no that. pearls in those oysters at all. Zero. It's a completely different species. It's not the same species that we eat. There you go. That's my and that's off the top of my head. That's a fun fact. Look at that, Mister Clever over here. He's putting the mercurial in six. It's better than putting the six in mercurial. <laughs> that was great. I should. You should thank me because that was the <laughs> best setup. I didn't know I did. That's I just, it. Like, that's the TikTok. It up there. That's a you're, five you're second like, TikTok clip. That, TikTok. That's a five second TikTok. You know, it's funny. I'm reading uh, Moby Dick, right? So Moby Dick takes three to four hundred pages for the boat to leave the shore even, let alone find the whale, and then uh, for the Pequod to leave. And then Captain Ahab doesn't show up for like 500 pages, and the whole book is about Captain Ahab and the white whale. Meanwhile, I read that, and now I'm going to TikTok going, ah, seven seconds to get <laughs> to the punchline. Like, I don't know well, if people are going to hang around for this. you got Moby Dick and Captain yeah. Ahab not turning up 300 pages. you got my Heinz yeah. thing where it took me half an hour to get to the semen joke. And then you've got the fact yeah. that you are scouring this podcast for a decent three seconds. <laughs> Shuck me. Let, me. let me adopt race position. <laughs> <laughs> right down to the gutter, as my mom would say. Right down to the gutter. About William Dampier. A naturalist who used piracy as a means to explore the world. He was the first Englishman to explore parts of Australia, one of Charles Darwin's inspirations, and introduced the words barbecue, avocado, chopsticks, and subspecies into the English language. What a random set of words he came up with. He's like, uh... Did he find uh, the words <laughs> or did he invent the words? He, in he introduced the words. So Walter Raleigh brings back actual potatoes and tobacco and this idiot just brings back the word chopsticks when you put <coughs> when you put some chicken on the grill we call that barbecue and they're like god it's genius you can eat it with chopsticks which is a subspecies of fork <laughs> Some common oral contraceptions, birth control pills, can be rendered ineffective if stored for an extended period of time above 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 30 degrees Celsius for you Brits, such as inside a hot car. They can also be degraded by storage in a cold place, such as a home refrigerator or freezer. I don't know about you, but when I get me a six-pack of birth control, I like to put that bad boy in the freezer or save it for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I just use my face as birth control. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, we all think you're handsome. Unfortunately, write a comment and tell him he's handsome. I've um, I've got a face that uh, that hasn't launched any ships. Hey, I was reading about um, no, no, I was I was watching a documentary on I think uh, back in the old days on the freak shows and the circuses and that, and they would have like the. Uh, there's something woman like, but it was actually a shaved bear. <laughs> They'd shave a bear, <laughs> yeah, and they like dress it in clothes and put lipstick on it, and everyone would go and go, oh, "This is amazing," but it was just a bear. Now I've met people like that in real life. Toad the wet sprocket got their name from a Monty Python sketch. That sounds like a pornographic thing to suggest to someone i mean it's it, it, you know to, yeah yeah do, um you got a choice tonight love uh you can either we can either do it conventionally <laughs> yeah conventionally Look, like i bought you flowers you can at least toad the yeah. wet sprocket uh, or, or we or we or we toad the wet sprocket <laughs> and she's like no i definitely don't want to toad the wet sprocket and you no, say it sounds like it's it, not no, your it's, lucky day hmm? no it sounds like she'd say it like you're like oh, honey we haven't had, we haven't done it in two months She's like, all right, okay, look, if you help me with the dishes, I'll toad the wet sprocket. 
<laughs> See, like it sounds, it doesn't, like it, that doesn't sound like a very like great intimate thing. I love it sounds it. like, all right, I'll toad the wet sprocket if you leave me alone. I love this. Now I've never listened to toad the wet sprocket. I'm assuming it's like a middle of the road bloody. It, no, isn't middle that of the, the band? Aren't they like from Australia? I don't know. I've always assumed they're like a Ben Folds Five or uh, like a. Uh, like just like a, no no what's the one that um uh, Ross and Chandler and that go to in Friends uh, they love it um oh oh the stupid bar no no um Hootie Cootie Coochie Hoochie Hoochie and Hootie Coochie Cootie 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 Hootie and the Blowfish I always thought that Hootie and the Blowfish hang out in their spare time with Toad the Wet Sprocket. It's just one great big horrible sex game. Now, hun, we we're going to try to have a baby, so please don't Toad your wet sprocket <laughs> for at least two days before we try next time. I mean, I, I don't know whether it's the worst band name ever or the best band name ever. When you work on the engine, make sure you Toad the Wet Sprocket before you take them bolts out of the carburetor. Um, <laughs> water intoxication can happen if you drink too much water mm. too fast and can be deadly. Dude, yes. it's bad enough to like die of like drinking too much like if you drink too much alcohol drug overdoses obviously are horrible ways to die but how sad that you died from drinking too much water like it just seems it, like a you know it can happen i think it's rare but it can happen but over here, poor jimmy took in too much air well oh the end of them <laughs> over here right <laughs> the, the advice is that people get really hot and they'll be out in the garden or doing whatever and they get really hot and they're and I do this myself, your natural instinct is to drink water and put ice in it and drink ice cold water. Apparently it's drinking ice cold water when you're boiling hot that kills you. You shouldn't drink ice really? cold water. You should drink war that's room what I temperature do. water, not ice cold water. What happens over here that's really dangerous is we, when we go to football games and stuff, we get like these kegs full of water and then we get somebody upside down and you, you open up the thing and you just pour the, ah! And they just ah! drinking ah! all the waters, ah! you know. Those hydro homies are freaks, and before you know it, they're going home, and you're towing the wet sprocket. You wake <laughs> up, you don't even know the lady, you know. <laughs> oh dear, I'm I'm, I'm actually um, envious of those who do tow the wet sprocket now. I feel like I I haven't lived. I need to tow the wet sprocket. Yeah, lived to you the Out wet Out of interest sprocket. now, right? Out of interest. What what is that? Because now I, I can only picture it as being a very very bizarre sexual practice. But what what actually did Monty Python mean? Toad the wet sprocket takes its name from a Monty Python uh, sketch called Rock Notes, in which a journalist delivers a nonsensical muse, uh, music news report. Rex Stardust lead electric triangle with Toad the wet sprocket. Has had to have an elbow removed following their recent successful worldwide tour. Oh, okay. So it is just the name of that's the a band down. in a Monty Python yeah, sketch. That's, that's, so Monty Python's actually called the rock band Toad the Wet Sprocket. So there's nothing fun. There's nothing. There's nothing to it. They just literally this, nicked yeah. it. They stole it. About the Bassus War, a tribal war that spanned forty years over the murder of a camel. Didn't World War One start over something s similar? The murder. I thought the... it was over the assassination of Archduke Fran Ferdinand, but hey, we all have different that's interpretations. Right. <laughs> that's right. It was. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we all look at the world. You say blue, I say red. You say yeah. potato, I say potato. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about one final fact? Also, I'll be toting, toting the wet sprocket. Uh, let me, me adopt race position. Unfortunately, it's this way around this time. <laughs> oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> Someone blur this out for me. Right, ready, ready, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to find a good one. Make it good. Don't let adaption us down on the very Ulysses. last fact. Hup. In 1967, adaption of Ulysses was considered so vulgar in New Zealand, theaters would play it to gender segregated audiences. The offensive parts were only one F word and a character describing oral sex. <laughs> Sounds like our podcast. Isn't that good? Like, I so think our... Did they only show the uh, the version with the F word and the oral sex to the men? 
was it like a sexist uh, gender splitting screening back then? No, they said it only. They only showed that to the young children. Oh, that, that's and what I'd have done too. Yeah, the men and women got the the censored version. Exactly. Well, the, I've got to say that was the final fact of today's episode. It was yes. shit. It was a shit final fact. You thought that was a shit final fact? Um. Well, let's go with the idea of sexual segregation. And I will actually call the podcast. This episode can be uh, uh, six of one and bill of the other. Just the facts. Episode three. Uh, sexual colon, segregation. Se- well, colon. Exactly. Sexual colon. colon. Yeah, colon. <laughs> that sounds like a bad guy colon. on Doctor Who. <laughs> colon. <The> colons. <laughs> colons. Oh, God. The colons. <laughs> the Daleks and the colons have united against us. You just have to worry when the colons move in next door. Uh, sexual segregation, brilliant. I reckon we'll go with that. Sexual segregation. If you turn on a, if if you turn on a colon a little bit, it's a semi colon. <laughs> uh, make sure you don't comment below, like you never do, and let us know whether you yeah, want never another comment. Episode. Okay, whatever you do, don't say don't anything. Don't say anything. If you think you're going to comment, don't, because not only are you not going to comment, but I'm not going to read it. So what are you going to oh. do about that? I'm, I've, I've got to nip off now and toad the wet sprocket. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, folks. <laughs> uh, until next time, over and out. The video is just on his face. <laughs> you know what he, he does? I'm using that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I'll, I'll edit all the rest of it out, but I'm using that. <laughs> Oh, um, the face will about... be overlaid. When I'm saying something very serious and not funny, just... you're doing that. Just... <laughs>